Hey guys, we've just published our 4070 Super review for the Founders Edition. And a day has gone by and we can now finally talk about the partner cards. Here we have an Asus Tough Gaming OC version of the same card, which is kind of the same, but also a little bit different. So just for reference, this is the 4070 Super. It's still warm just off the test bench. Let's open this up and see what the Tough Gaming one looks like. One of the main things that they've done with this generation, it seems that the Supers are going in all black style. So let me show you. So up to this point, all the cards have been more grayish. And this one is got this gunmetal black color, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's not as black as the Founders Edition. You can see this is way darker. It's kind of a black gray, probably more dark gray. In the box, we have the graphics card itself and we have a few accessories. For the accessories, we have the required power cable. So it's a two to one uh, cable. We also have some cable ties as well as one of those little extendable legs and a screwdriver, screwdriver thingies. So if you unscrew this, it has a screwdriver on the inside, which is kind of cool. But generally speaking, this is just a leg to hold your GPU up. So when you mount your GPU, let's say you've mounted it this way, and if it tags, you can actually have it a bit kind of held upwards. They are heavier, they're big, they're big GPUs nowadays, so it makes sense to have something like this. Um, I never used it, but you know, some people might actually need to use it, depending on your motherboard and your case. As far as the card is concerned, it's considerably bigger than the Founders Edition, so if you just kind of look at them side by side, it's way bigger. It's using the same ports. On the back, you have three display ports here, and you also have three display ports here with a single HDMI 2.1. But the size difference is huge. What's interesting is their weight is kind of the same. In fact, I think maybe the founder edition is a bit heavier because it's more dense. So they have a much heavier heat sink on here. This on the other hand has a lot more kind of empty space around and it's kind of more spread. Uh, you've got triple fan design in here and only two fans here with a flow through design. This also features the flow through design, but just on this section alone over here. For power, it's using the same connector. Uh, so this is the 16 pin connector. I believe this is the latest version. You also have a little switch here for the quiet or performance mode. Um, if you wanted to change the different firmware, which is really cool, especially if you were to firmware flash this and you've messed it up, you can flip, flip to the other one and still use it. So, you know, it's useful. Overall, this is a tried and true design. And to be honest, at this level of the card, so the 70 series, I don't think it makes much difference uh, which card you go with. Uh, obviously, it depends on your region and the costs. It tend to be that the NVIDIA first party cards are actually cheaper. They kind of stay closer to the MSRP, uh, but they sell more of these and they become a good deal in the secondhand market later on. So that's something to consider. We've actually tested them out. And across a whole stack of games, I'm not gonna get too deep into the details, but they've averaged out within one FPS of each other if I averaged out all the different games. But there was a notable difference. This card actually was using up more power by about 6.75% on average across you know, all the games in comparison to the Founders Edition. And that's likely because it's got an extra fan to power. We do have a full review of the Founders Edition card, so you can kind of reference that in terms of what performance you should get. Uh, but the other notable difference is its temperature and frequency. This is an OC version, so it's running ever so slightly faster than the Founders Edition card. Um, the difference is very, very minor. It's like 20 or 30 megahertz, so it's kind of the same. But this card actually runs up to eight degrees cooler. It varies back and forth, but when we did our main kind of benchmark for heavy use, uh, we got up to about eight degrees delta. But when it comes down to noise levels, there were, actually, we couldn't tell. It was actually below our noise floor in the office here. So it was below 39 dBA, and we were not using our quiet room. But below 39 dBA, means that they were actually generally very quiet. There was some coal wine though. There was a bit of coal wine on the Founders Edition where it kind of sounds almost at the same tune as the fan with just a little bit of an extra. But the Asus card definitely had a coal wine 
and you could hear it from about 50 centimeters away in an open test bench. Um, if you go any further, it kind of disappears, but it, it kind of sounds a bit like a cicada. Um, so it's not great if you're right next to it. So if you were to build in a case from the likes of Streetcom, where it's just open and you want to have it on your desk, like just here, you would probably hear it on heavy load. But if it's just in a normal case under your desk, it doesn't really matter. So that's about it. As far as which one should you get? Personally, I really like the Founders Edition card because it's just tiny. Look at this. If you put them one on top of the other, you're almost talking probably like a third smaller than the Asus card, which means you can fit into more cases. And when you sell it, those people will be able to put into more cases while the performance is on par. But I also appreciate that the NVIDIA cards won't be sold everywhere. So you're gonna have to buy whichever is well, probably cheapest. I would try to avoid the cheapest of the cheap cards that if you can and go for something at least like a tough gaming level um, but other than that i don't think it makes any sense to go any higher tier the amount of power these chips produce don't require a crazy amount of cooling what do you guys think about this which card would you buy would you buy a 4070 super in the first place and if you did which one would you choose the beastie aces card which runs a little bit cooler or this kind of heavy dense uh, NVIDIA first party card. Let us know in the comments below. We'll also leave the links for these cards below as well so you can check out them further if there are any deals or anything else. Um, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.